The story of creation and fall in Genesis 1, 2, and then the fall in, Gen in Genesis 3 is a heartbreaking story. Sin is above all a spoiler. It spoils things that are good. <clears throat> and so after, <clears throat> excuse me, after Adam and Eve sin, they're expelled from the garden, and then everything just ups the ante. Their children get involved in fratricide, and um, Cain himself gets banned and so forth. So the, the Bible story begins in a picture of utter harmony and delight. God saw that what he had made was good six times, and one time at the end, very good. It's almost as if God has a kind of boyish enthusiasm about this new project that he has launched. And it looks like it's just going to be full of bliss forever. But then it all, it all ends up in a shambles. And there is disbelief, pride, lying, scapegoating, the whole thing rising in crescendo. But then, um, across the Old Testament, we start to get pictures of restoration. Promises uh, already in Genesis 3, pictures of God's grace already then, uh, covenants with Abraham to uh, restore and to have a people be at the center of this restoration. And then when you get to the big, major writing prophets, and especially Isaiah, you get a portrait of what it might be like in the end when God has, um, has walked the whole road of redemption with us and things are finally restored to where they would have been if people in the Garden of Eden had been able to multiply and grow up. And so you get portraits of uh, children being able to play over the um, holes of snakes, um, wolves and, and lambs being able to lie down together, um, mountains running with wine, uh, people being able to plant a vineyard and then harvest their own grapes, not have it swiped by somebody else. Uh, people being able to put their weapons away. People uh, taking their old weapons and making them now into farming implements. Glorious, glorious pictures of harmony, <clears throat> justice, and maybe a much underestimated dimension, and that's delight. Human beings were made to delight. To delight in God, to delight in each other, to delight in a sunny, unspoiled toddler. Um, there are so many occasions now that call for dismay, but shalom is a picture of how things could be in the restored new heaven and earth and how much justice, harmony, beautiful relationships, longing, delight will center in this new reality. I think that um, a lot of us who have been kind of activist Christians have wanted to, you know, do what we can to help the reformation of society, We've gotten very culturally involved and so forth. I think all that is really important. I mean, we, we are not to flee the world, absolutely not. On the other hand, we can sometimes become a little worldly in our enthusiasms and forget what's coming, lose the hope of heaven lose the picture of, of what's up ahead. I don't see how anybody can age without having a pretty gorgeous picture of heaven in their head someplace. 